Hello everyone, back to today's first video doing the ECMWF 30 day look ahead for today's first video. So we're going to have a look at the temperature and precipitation anomalies for the UK and for the rest of Europe too for the next uh, four weeks. Uh, we can't show you mean sea level pressure or uh, 500 millibar heights with this, but you can get a rough idea of what the model is forecasting uh, in terms of a broad pattern from its temperature and precipitation uh, anomalies. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, for uh, this first video coming up later on today, we'll have the regular week to 10 day video update with all of the usual features. And that'll be up for you uh, later on this afternoon. Uh, so at the Hungarian Met Office uh, for this one, so a big thank you to them for supplying us uh, with the charts. Um, without further ado, I think we'll get on with it. So we're going to begin with the week uh, three for the year, week one for our forecast period temperature anomaly. This is taking us from the 13th to the 19th of January. Much of Europe remains very warm. So, uh, again, we have temperature anomalies coming out widely around uh, 6 to 10 degrees above average across much of northern and uh, northeastern Europe and into western parts of Russia. More widely, uh, we see temperatures around 3 to 6 degrees above average through Scandinavia. And then coming down into the central and some eastern parts of Europe as well. For the UK and for Ireland, we're actually a little bit cooler. Uh, so the temperature anomaly across Ireland is a little bit below average, can you believe, in the weekend. I haven't seen that uh, very often. Uh, and for the rest of the UK, we're talking about anomalies up to around 3 degrees above average in the southeastern corner. France remains very mild indeed. And then through the Mediterranean... Again, generally uh, above average in most parts of the map. We do have a small area uh, around the Balkans or just the east of the Balkans that's a little bit cooler. Um, and then coming down into the southeast of Europe, we find that Greece, again, is very close to average. <coughs> Excuse me. But overall, it does look as though many parts of Europe, the vast majority of Europe, is uh, milder than average in the weekend, and particularly for those northern areas where it has been so very, very mild through January so far, it continues to be the case, but it's uh, exceptionally mild for much of northern, and uh, particularly northeast of Europe and into western parts of Russia in the weekend. Precipitation anomalies are looking like this, so a bit more unsettled in the northwest. Uh, so really from Spain and Portugal uh, down here where it's a bit wet and average up into the far northwestern tip of France then into the UK and Ireland and then also over towards some parts of Scandinavia, southern Norway, maybe Denmark, southern parts of Sweden. Looks just a little bit more unsettled there than it has been uh, for a while. So obviously there's a bit more influence going on uh, with the jet stream in that part of uh, Europe. But then we come down to most um, central, southern and eastern areas where we have a lot of high pressure. So it looks like it's driving average through much of, uh, much of France actually in towards Germany, on in towards Poland as well. I mean down into the southern, southeast part of Europe. A lot of high pressure uh, domination going on there. Really from France over to the Black Sea. And out in the northwest we seem to have just that little bit more influence from uh, low pressure and from the jet stream. But this is a mild ridge of high pressure that's covering many parts of Europe and keeping much of Europe dry away from the far west and northwest. Moving through to week four for uh, the year for 2020, week uh, two for our forecast period, we go from the 20th to the 26th of January. Bit of a change here and we didn't see this last week. But uh, it looks as though the uh, ECM today is forecasting slightly colder than average weather across the western part of Europe uh, from the 20th to 26th of January. That's quite a change on what we've had for the past few weeks. Scotland is still milder than average, but uh, for much of Ireland, England, Wales, down into France and down to Spain and Portugal, we have below average temperature anomalies here, which as I say, is not something that we've seen very much of uh, through this um, particular winter. 
Going a bit further northwards, though, we run back into those milder than average temperatures across many northern and northeastern parts of Europe. Again, temperatures widely are uh, three to six degrees above average in those deep orange colours. Exceptionally mild week coming up again for much of northern eastern northeastern uh, Europe and into western parts of Russia. Down into the Mediterranean, we find that it's driving out through the central bowl of the Med from Italy through Corsica, Sardinia and up towards the Côte d'Azur. But on the uh, western side of Europe, so that is going to be uh, Spain and Portugal, and even on the eastern side of Europe, which is sort of Greece and Turkey, those two areas look a little bit more, uh, look a little bit cooler. But in the middle uh, part of Europe, it's actually warmer than average. And precipitation-wise, we're uh, looking like this. So again, same same idea uh, in the med for precipitation. So it's wetter than average through this central bowl, a little bit drier over towards the west, and a little bit drier over towards the east. So quite unusual what's going on there in um in the Med. It looks like the central part of the Med is sort of sandwiched by high pressure on either side. Going further north, lots of dry weather then uh, across many northern, central and indeed western parts of Europe too. Ireland, UK, France looking dry of an average high pressure seemingly uh, dominating the scene really across many uh, central, northern and western parts of Europe until we come up towards Scandinavia, go up here and it goes a little bit wet and average, especially again around Norway. So I think broadly high pressure sort of pulling back towards the west of Europe and allowing some colder air to come in, probably from the northwest, probably lining the jet stream up on a northwest southeast trajectory, something like that, with high pressure pulling into this sort of region. Uh, so it's not much to get excited about from a cold perspective, but it does allow the far west of Europe to turn that little bit colder. And then we move through to uh, week three for our forecast period, week five for the year. And this takes us from 27th of January to 2nd of February. Base fuel parts of Europe looking mild and average. The warmest uh, anomalies to average are on the eastern side of Europe again. So kind of like Poland over towards western Russia. That's where we have those anomalies of three to six degrees above average. Elsewhere, we're sort of one to three degrees above average across western parts of Europe and also coming down into the Mediterranean we can see that much of the Med is mild of an average here as well so a very mild week coming up there as we end January and move into the beginning of February and then the precipitation anomaly is weakening as we go through to week three, as it usually does, from 22nd, 27th of January to 2nd of February. Uh, we see lots of white appearing, which is either average or more likely no signal. Uh, the, south, the far southeast of uh, Europe looks a little bit uh, drier than average there. Northern Europe looks a little bit wetter than average. Otherwise, again, there's not much to go on. The signal is really too weak to be able to decipher what the precipitation anomaly is truly doing there, I think. Finally, we go through to week six, which is week four for our forecast period, week six, week six for uh, 2020. And again, northern parts of Europe are looking warmer than average with anomalies again around three to six degrees above average through Scandinavia, around the Baltic Sea and into west of Russia. Otherwise, more widely, we see those anomalies around one to three degrees above average, very mild as we go into the early part of February then. So if anybody's waiting for February to deliver some proper winter weather, the ECM model is not seeing that at all. It's seeing a continuation of very mild weather through most parts of Europe into the early part of February after a slightly colder week uh, across Western Europe um, next week. Precipitation anomalies looking like this finally from the 3rd to the 9th February. So wetter than average still around Norway, above average precipitation there, and also Iceland. A bit drier than average in the west of Europe, including France and parts of southern England, Belgium, Holland, southern Germany. Those sort of areas look like they're dominated uh, by high pressure. And generally quite dry conditions look like they're uh, to be seen through the Mediterranean as well, especially again in this central bowl of the Med and over towards Greece, perhaps. 
So from a uh, coal perspective, it's not a particularly good update. Again, it looks like most parts of Europe are going to have four weeks of uh, relentlessly mild weather, really. It does turn a little bit colder next week in the west of Europe, and that could include... Uh, the UK as well. I don't think we'll be talking about snow there, but just a little bit colder as high pressure kind of repositions a little bit. But overall, this looks like quite a dry four weeks across many parts of Europe and remaining very mild, especially across northern parts of Europe with no real sign of winter bedding in up to like the 9th of February. So we shall continue to keep looking for a bit of winter, <laughs> but so far you have to say there's not a great deal uh, of sign of it. That said, I'm not sure that this colder week that the ECM is forecasting for next week uh, for the west of Europe was predicted last week. So, as ever with these long range models, they probably do overcook the temperatures uh, a little bit. And uh, maybe there'll be some surprises ahead. We should wait and see. Remember, it's only a snapshot of what the model is showing. Any forecast beyond five to seven days is unreliable at best. Um... So we should wait and see how things play out in reality. But that's how it's looking today and this week. Right, we'll be back later on with your week 10-day video update, including all the regular features, so come back for that then. That's all for now, though, and thanks for watching.